wild like my daddy, but straightforward like my mama. Drink like granddad, smoke sluggies like the other. But granddad feels the guts. Hustle like my uncle JT and cousin Big B. I got big dreams like Jimmy Lee. Now my aim is just running by Billy Beans. Keep a job like Uncle Kevin told me. Top notch player like David. And that caddy thing since the age snap. Big corporate thug ain't political like Jack. Make me rest in peace, but I've been taught a lot. See, it's hot head, but I'm scared to get money or leave the beat. Hey champions, welcome to tonight's edition of the Motivation to Elevation Facebook Live podcast. Thank you so much for hopping on. It's yours truly, Arian Tyson. I am sitting in my office here in St. Louis, and it is a privilege and honor to be back before you tonight. Before we dive into tonight's topic, which is a simple one, and so it's really one that requires me to go hard in the paint with, because it's a lot of people that are that I'm seeing that are just waiting for the right time to to get started on something that they know that they're supposed to be doing. But for whatever reason, they haven't pulled the trigger. So I'm going to take that time to address it. But before I do. Again, as I as I've been doing over the last couple podcasts, I want to thank those who have taken time and really have put their money where their mouth is to invest in me. And I am so grateful for the for the feedback and for the reviews that I've gotten about my book that I released last month. And for those who might be new to the podcast or you haven't been on in a while, I did release a book last month and it is entitled Love Me or Hate Me, My Journey from Motivation to Elevation. And it is available. I actually received a shipment of books tonight before I got home. And so literally, (laughs) that's what this box is. This box that I just opened is books. And all of these books are not sold. So... What that means is I actually have some books that are on hand. I actually have some books that are available for purchase. And so for those who are local or those who want to purchase the book, I am shipping the books that are already sold this coming Saturday. So so half of the books that are in this box will be shipped Saturday. So if you want your book to be shipped Saturday to you, then you need to go to www.loveMeOrHateMe.org and be a, and order the book, and that way it will be shipped to you this weekend. Again, that's www.loveMeOrHateMe.org, and it looks like my cousin Robbie hopped on. She said, hey, cuz, I'm enjoying the book. Right on. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. She got her book this past Friday, so... I'm glad to know that that you are enjoying it. And and also I got a shout out. Oh, I got a shout out my friend Rita that just hopped on. 
because I know that she has read the book and she left me an awesome review on Amazon. So I definitely appreciate you for hopping on tonight and for also leaving the review on Amazon. So for those who have the book and are working to complete the book, make sure that you leave a review for me on Amazon because that really helps me in a variety of ways. So again, thank you so much. Having said all that, got all the, got all of that out of the way, let's dive into this topic. The topic for tonight, and I actually put a post on Facebook last week, and I said for for this week, for this podcast, and for next week's podcast, I'm actually taking suggestions. And so one of the suggestions I got for tonight was to talk about just do it. And that's that really resonates with me. And the reason being is because that's how the book became about. I decided to just do it. And Tiffany, I appreciate you also be safe flying to Texas. And that's funny, you're flying to Texas because in a couple weeks, I'm flying to Texas. I'm actually going to spend my birthday in Dallas this year. So this will be the second year in a row that I have spent my birthday away from St. Louis. So definitely going to be praying for traveling mercy for you to and from. And then my mom then hopped on. So, you know, I, I appreciate you all. But to talk about the fact of you have to get to a point where you just decide to just do it. So let me talk about why that's important to just do it. If you've been like me at some point in your life, you've waited on the right time. You waited on, you waited to, you had all of your, you know, all of your ducks lined up in a row. You wanted to make sure that you had all of your I's dotted and all of your T's crossed before you pulled the trigger, before you got started on what on what God has has placed in your heart to do. But here's the thing. And sometimes you might even find yourself in a position now where you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. But you have this inkling that you should be doing something. And the thing is, you have to do something. You have to do something because you cannot remain stagnant. Too, too many times, life is just going by. Time is just slipping by you. And you don't have as much time as you think you do. You, not, you don't have as many opportunities as you think you do in order for you to be successful, in order for you to make an impact. Because there are too many people right now that are trying to wait on the quote unquote perfect opportunity that they're passing over opportunities repeatedly. And then they're sitting up wondering why they're still poor. Well, poor is I actually gave an acronym for poor passing over opportunities repeatedly. And so with that, you have to get to a point when you get sick and tired of really being sick and tired. You get to a point where you say, you know what? I have nothing to lose. What's the worst that could happen? I may just succeed. That's when you need to get to adapt the model of just do it. Just do it. Because the one thing that you don't want to do is go through life with what ifs. What if I decided to take the leap of faith? What if I decided to go right instead of going left? What if I decided to go up instead of staying down? What if I decided to continue to go forward instead of always looking backwards? And there's too many people going through life with these what ifs. You don't have time for what ifs. You have enough what ifs. Why haven't you gotten started? So there are some things that you're going to have to do in order for your situation to turn around. 
Because if you're not happy where you are, that means that you have to do some things differently. That means that you're going to have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That means that some things that you're going to have to let go in this season. There are some things that you're going to have to let go in this chapter of your life. There are some things, there are some people that you're going to have to let go in 2018 in order for you to experience how to go from motivation to elevation. And there is a key component in how to go from motivation to elevation. And for those that have, have read the book, I talk about what that component is. If you haven't got to that part, keep reading. And if you have already read the book, then you know what I'm talking about. But that's what it takes. You have to get to the point where you just decide to do it. You have to realize that you have what it takes in you. For, for the things that have been placed in you to accomplish, you have what it takes. Because it starts with a thought. But many times, people just leave it as a thought. You got to put some actions behind those thoughts. Because I can tell you, as much as I've talked about this book, there are still people that don't realize that I have a book out. There are still people that don't realize how long it took me to have to sit down and write the book, but how fast I actually wrote the book. So what am I saying? It took me 18 years, 18 years to actually sit down and say, you know what? I'm going to just do it. I have nothing to lose. I'm going to just do it. And then I looked up. And about 42 to 43 days later, the book was completed. So to write a book that took me 18 years to write, I wrote it in, le in less than 45 days. And that's what will happen when you make the decision to do it. Was all of my, all of my ducks in a row? Of course they were not. You wouldn't believe what I was actually going through when I wrote the book. But you'll find out once you purchase the book. But the thing about it is you have to get to a point when it's all said and done. You cannot keep arguing for your excuses. You cannot keep making excuses. You cannot keep waiting on the right time because the, the court of, there's no such thing as the right as the part as a perfect time. You can, you have to get started. That's the only way that you can become great is to get started. And there's too many people that are sitting on their greatness. There are too many people that's trying to suppress their greatness. They're not walking into their, their greatness. They're not embracing their greatness because they're trying to wait on the perfect time to get started. Instead of adapting the mentality that I'm going to just do it. So think about the things that you know that has been eating at you, that has been disturbing your spirit, that has been flat out bothering you because you know that you're supposed to be further along on the journey than you are right now. Well, you have some choices to make. Are you going to stay there and just say, and just become content and say, hey, this is, this is how, this is the best it's gonna get for me, or are you going to be real with yourself? Are you going to be able to look yourself in the mirror and critique yourself constructively and be able to tell yourself, to be honest with yourself and tell yourself, you know what? You got more in you, kid. You have more in you. And it's time for you to let it out because there's too many people right now that specialize in being selfish. And what do I mean by that? By you suppressing your greatness, by you not operating your purpose, by you not living out your purpose, you are being very selfish right now and you are blocking Blessings from coming your way. You are blocking yourself from people wanting to pour into you, from people wanting to invest in you because you don't believe in yourself. You believe you're shortchanging yourself. And why do I have the courage to say that? Why can I say that? Because at one point I was very guilty of it. I was guilty of it. And I actually have people that are watching that 
would proverbially give me that kick in the behind, whether they were face to face with me or whether or whether they were on social media. But people see things in you that sometimes you don't see in yourself. But just because you don't see it doesn't mean that they're crazy. It means that maybe you're too close to see what other people see in you. So maybe you have to take a step back. You ever heard the, the phrase, some, you know, a setback is a setup for a comeback? Sometimes setbacks happen in your life in order for you to realize what other people see in you that you might not see, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. So sometimes don't always beat yourself up when you have a setback. Setbacks are inevitable. And I even talk about, I talk about, I forgot which chapter, but I talk about how, matter of fact, in the chapter I talk about in my book about how to go from motivation to elevation. It talks about how greatness is the ability to authentically walk in your truth regardless of shortcomings, recognizing that setbacks are inevitable, but realizing that the price of achieving it is responsibility. That's my, def that's my personal definition of greatness. Greatness is not a straight line. It does not mean that you're going to go straight to the top. It's not it doesn't mean that you're going to ascend to the top like this in, in a in a at a 45 degree angle. There's going to be some zigzags. It's going to look like a heartbeat. It's going to look like a heart monitor. You're going to have those those ups and downs. You're going to have those peaks and valleys. But as long as you reach the destination, you will be able to look back and say it's worth it. It was worth it. So ask yourself who do you know that needs to just adapt the mindset that it's time to just do it? Just do it. Stop waiting. Stop waiting for everybody to support you. Stop, stop waiting on everybody to say that, you know, to give you validation. You don't need validation from everybody. If God has validated you, that's it. You have to step out because there are people waiting on you. Do you realize that you have people that you are specifically assigned to? And the reason that I realize this, this is how I learned this to be true. It was when life brought me to my knees. It was when life brought me to my knees. And I talked about on the last podcast how... I spent so much time on my knees in 2016 that I finally realized after all the all the heartbreak and, and sudden loss that I dealt with during that time frame in my life, I realized that there are certain people, there's a certain audience that I'm assigned to. And it took life bringing me to my knees. For me to realize that. My question to you is. Are you going to allow life to bring you to your knees. Before you take action. Before you step out on faith. Faith is an action word. It's not just believing. You have. Your faith does not activate until you put action to it. You have to activate your faith. You, you, you just can't sit up and just say, you know, I have faith. That's not enough. Put some action to it. If you really want to show you got faith, put some action to it. Adapt the mindset that you're just going to do it, whatever it takes, whether it's, whether it's to start a new business, whether it's to write a book, whether it's to... Co be a co-author in a book or whether it's to leave that leave that job that you know that you don't want to be on and start and start walking into your destiny start walking into your purpose or whether it's to leave people that that mean you no good that you have outgrown because truth be told you outgrow a lot you have outgrown a lot of people but because we are humans by nature, because 
we get comfortable being around people that we that we've known for a long time and we feel like they're going to always be there. We want them to be there. But there are times where you actually outgrow the people that you love. And it's and and and, and no one is really to blame, but it's just the fact that some some things change, some people change. And that's really a sign of growth because with all the experiences that you that you have dealt with, with all these experiences that you have encountered and endured in your life, whether you've lost someone suddenly, whether you have, whether you have had countless setbacks, whether you have, you've had a lot of money and then you might have gone through a bankruptcy, or whether you have, or whether you've had multiple cars and they've been repossessed, or whether you've been in a house and it was foreclosed. Setbacks are inevitable, but that doesn't mean that you stop going. That doesn't mean that you throw in the towel. That doesn't mean that you that you just quit on everything. And I'm here to tell you, there are, there are some things that you need to quit. So that whole mentality of, you know, you just don't quit, you know, don't quit. You know, that's that's not entirely true. And I'm just being honest with you. There are some things that you need to let go. There are some things that you're going to have to let go. There are some people that you're going to have to let go in order for you to get to the place and space that you know that you need to be. And you have to be. You have to be understanding of it and you have to be accepting of that. You have to you have to recognize that because when when you choose not to recognize it, you're stunning your progress. You're stunning your own growth. And you're doing a disservice not only to yourself, not only to your family, but you are doing a disservice to those that you're assigned to. You have an appointment, you have an assignment. There are people that are going to hear your story, that are going to be touched by your testimony. Once you decide to start telling it, and I'm not talking about telling just the, the parts of the story that make you look good, but telling all of it, the good, the bad and the ugly. Because all of us, all of us have ugly moments. All of us have, have experienced things that have brought us to our knees, that have made us cry. All of us have experienced things that just the mere thought of it makes us feel uncomfortable. But when you realize that your purpose is bigger than you, you can talk about it all because the focus is taken off of you off of you and it's and it's put on those that need to hear your story because they're on the verge of giving up. They're on the verge of throwing in the towel. They believe that nobody understands what they're going through. They believe that they don't have a friend in the world. But they but you can resonate with them. You can resonate with them when you authentically tell your story. You can resonate with them great, greater than I can. And you don't have to be as articulate as your favorite speaker. You don't have to be. All you have to do is be honest, transparent, and authentic. Because when you are those three things, those that are not meant for you, you're going to turn them off. But those that are meant for you, they will, not only will they admire you, they will appreciate you for your courage. But more importantly than that, they will respect you. And there are times where even the people that look you dead in the eye 
and have the, the gall to say that they love you, they really don't. They just, they're in love for what you can possibly do for them or they're in love with what they can get from you. But there are those that genuinely love you. There are those that genuinely respect you and they want to see you succeed. They want to see you win. They're going to be able to look, look at you and see the real you and not turn their tail and run or tuck tail and run when they hear things that don't line up with the person they know. Because the real ones will go and ask questions. The real ones will actually come to you in love and come see about you and not walk around and acting like they don't know anything. See, that's what that's what family do. That's what fam that's what real family does. I was having a conversation with my mother earlier today, and one of my relatives was you know, in a mo having a moment where they were depressed. And it's easy when someone is depressed and they go to social media and they, they let it be known that they're depressed. But you had certain people at times that were just telling them to stop it. But then you had other people that was actually saying, if you need me, let me know. If you need me, call me. Or if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. You see the difference in those responses? Because there are times where people do stuff for attention. But then there are also times where people are actually asking for help. And you can't be so holier than thou. Or act like you have it so much together that you can't understand when someone is, is just seeking attention and when someone actually is seeking help. Because that could be the difference. That could be the key. And I'm telling you what I know from personal experience because there were certain people that... They saw that something was not right or something was bothering me. But instead of asking me what's wrong, they did everything else. And I lost a lot of respect for them. So it gets to the point where after you've done everything, after you've tried to figure it out, after you try to wait on the right time to get started, after you have decided that, well, I said I'm, a, I said Friday I'm gonna get started Monday, and then Monday comes and you don't do anything. Well, I'm gonna just wait till next next Monday. Or well, I'm gonna wait till next month. Or I'm gonna wait till the start of the month. Or I'm gonna wait till next year. You have to get to a point where you just you just do it. You have to get to a point where you just say enough is enough. I don't care who supports me. I don't care who goes with me. I'm going to do it because it is necessary. It is time. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of feeling like I'm a crutch. I'm tired. I'm tired of remaining where I am. I deserve to be further along this journey or on this process than I am right now. And I'm tired of leaning and depending on people. You got to do it. You have you have what it takes in you. You have the you have you have the tools inside of you to get it done. And once you make the decision that you're just going to do it regardless to who's who's supportive of you. You will find yourself being supported by people that you really didn't think was going to be supportive of you. And then you're going to actually look up and find out that the people that you thought was going to support you, they don't even support you. But you know what? That's OK. That's all right, because God always has a couple rams in the bush. And I'm telling you what I know, because since I've launched this book. I have 
seen a lot of things. I have my eyes have been open to a lot of things. Some things have been revealed to me in this process. And I'm grateful for it because it has made me hung hungrier than I ever have been before. And all I can tell you all is that the best is still to come. So let me share with you a couple things and I'm about to wrap this up as far as things that you need to just start doing. Create a vision for your life if you have not already done so. Ask yourself, what do you want your life to look like? How do you see you? Because how you see yourself is critical. It is important. Because if you don't have, if you don't love yourself, it's near impossible for you to accept the love from somebody else when it comes to you. So you have to take some time to envision and realize the person you want to be. You have to see yourself as the champion that you are, even when you might not have money to your name because it's in you. But you have to get started. Then you have to start being your genuine self. And I talked about it earlier. Now, all too often, we hide our true selves away. From the world out of unnecessary fear. And if you have been following me, fear is an acronym. You have a couple choices when it comes to fear. You can either forget everything and run or you can face everything and rise. The choice is up to you. So starting today, let yourself shine. Even if you think your closest friends might find you a bit odd. And that's all right, because the world would be a boring place if everybody was the same. So embrace the odd, the oddness that is you. And then finally, do something. When I mean just do it, do something to work towards your goals daily. It is not about the sprint. It is about the marathon. And too many times people get so frustrated or they become so overwhelmed by the marathon that they're still at the starting line and they have not even they haven't even got out the blocks. Well, the gun has already been sounded. It's time for you to just do it. Whatever it is, whatever it takes, you have what it takes to get it done, but it's going to but you have to get started. You can't become great until you get started. But once you get started, you will become great if you stay the course, if you exercise a level of consistency. And then you'll look up and realize that you have overcome some things that you thought you used to be afraid of, that you thought that you that you were fearful of. How do I know? Videos. That was my fear. Being in front of a camera. That was my fear. Now, people that get to know me, people that have followed me, people that have have reached out to me or have found me because of my videos, they look at me and say I'm a natural. But only if you knew, if you knew, if you knew me prior to a certain time, I will tell you. I'm, it may seem natural now. But that's because I made the decision that I'm not going to allow this to to be a fear anymore. I'm going to punch this fear in the face. I'm going to overcome this fear. So now it seems natural, but it wasn't always like that. And and the confidence that I have now, it didn't happen overnight. But it happened when I made the decision to just do it. So with that being said, Thank you so much to everybody that has taken time out of their schedule to hop on. I trust that something I've shared with you tonight, is, it is of value and that, you, that it gave you something to think about as you go through the rest of the night and through the rest of the week. And then again, if you have not already done so, my brand new book is here. Not only that. A package came in the mail a couple hours ago where I actually have books on hand. 
my brand new book, Love Me or Hate Me, My Journey from Motivation to Elevation. It is here. You can order it at www.lovemeorhateme.org. And you can get a copy of it and I will personally personally sign it and give you a personal message. It will not be a generic message because depending upon the person that's receiving the book, there may be some things I need to say to them. So I'm going to give you a personal heartfelt message. And so I'm, I'm trusting that you're that you're receptive to it. And again, as always, remember in life you have two choices. You can make moves or you can make excuses, but you most certainly cannot do both. It's yours truly, Arian Tyson, the Moving Motivator. Thank you so much for taking time to hop on tonight's edition of the Motivation to Elevation Facebook Live podcast. I will be back next Tuesday at the same time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 8.30 p.m. Central for another episode. Till then, God bless. Good night.